pilot Mike Smith, followed by Krista Masala, feature in space, uh, Ellison Onizuka, and payload specialist Greg Jarvis. This letter is written to ensure that management is fully aware of the seriousness of the current O-ring erosion problem in the SRM joints from an engineering standpoint. The mistakenly accepted position on the joint problem was to fly without fear of failure and to run a series of design evaluations which would ultimately lead to a solution or at least a significant reduction of the erosion problem. This position is now drastically changed as a result of the SRM 16A nozzle joint erosion, which eroded a secondary O-ring with the primary O-ring never sealing. If the same scenario should occur in a field joint, parentheses, and it could, then close parentheses, then it is a jump ball as to the success or failure of the joint because the secondary O-ring cannot respond to the clevis opening rate and may not be capable of pressurization. The result would be a catastrophe of the highest order, dash, loss of human life. It is my honest and very real fear that if we do not take immediate action to dedicate a team to solve the problem, with the field joint having the number one priority, then we stand in jeopardy of losing a flight along with all the launch pad facilities. We have main engine start, four, three, two, one, and liftoff, liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Good roll program confirmed. Challenger now heading down range. Velocity 2257 feet per second. Altitude 4.3 nautical miles. Downrange distance 3 nautical miles. Engines throttling up. Three engines now at 104%. Challenger, go and throttle up. Roger, go throttle up. Roger, go and throttle up. Flight controllers here looking very carefully at the situation. Obviously a major malfunction. NASA did their best through a series of many, many half-truths and, and some outright lies to make it sound like uh, it was an accident. And that's bullshit because uh, it was a horrible disaster, but not an accident. When you've got people that are your technical experts jumping up and down, raising hell, trying to stop the launch and being ignored, you can't then, when something goes wrong, turn around and say it was an accident or with a bad judgment call, or this or that. And that's has a history of, of being less than truthful about their screw-ups. Just like they did on Apollo. They, they said the astronauts at Apollo, on the Apollo fire, died instantly, which is, in fact, absolutely not true. They died in excruciating, painful death as they were inhaling flaming oxygen. Apollo's got a fire in the cockpit! That's how they still operate. Columbia happened for the same reason the Challenger happened. Because you had two managers that were hell-bent to say that everything was okay and just come home. And they burned up and killed the astronauts once again. All because they canceled a $200,000 check of the vehicle from space and or from the ground. And one of the top managers canceled that request. We have a report from the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. Flight director confirms that. We are uh, looking at uh, checking with the recovery forces to see uh, what can be done at this point. I think that they made a mistake by not putting some of the people away during Apollo days, and they repeated that same mistake with Challenger and also Columbia.